Well, you and Dre hadn't seen each other in 10 years. And he called you up one day and said, come no. down come Yeah, down he the studio. called me after I sent him a care package. Right, with a bunch of porn movies. Which is a big box, <laughs> about this big, full of movies. Yeah. I said, that'd get his attention. And, and, it, it, it and he sat in his, some room wherever he keep mail, sat in there for so long, he's about to throw it out. And somebody in the security, whatever, said, hey, so this one's from Compton. And he looked at it, opened it, and my number was in there. That's mm -hmm. how he called me. And one of the most poignant parts of the book is uh, he called you and said, hey, come down in the studio. And you told him, okay, I just have to borrow a car. Yeah. yeah. And he was like. And he was like, what? I said, yeah, I don't have a car. The first time in 25 years, I don't have a car. So I borrowed a car and I got down and he said, so what did you do? I did nothing. It just. Money ran out, you know. He thought I might have, you know, had already, because I was living with my first kid's mother, and, you know, it was just all going downhill. And I just said, no, I don't have a car. And he looked at, I remember him looking me in my face. He said, whatever it takes to fix you, money ain't no object. What do you need first? I need a car. <laughs> and that was it. That was the only thing he was allowed to do was the car. That was it. And he actually gave you the money for a but car. But that was in, not 98, that was in 2010. Yeah. Yeah. Like March 2010 or something. Right. And he actually gave you. No, he gave me money to go buy a car. You bought like a Nissan Cube or something. A brand new Nissan Cube off the lot. It was right. a stick shift, I remember. The, the automatic was too hot. <laughs> how did it feel? I mean, number one, how did it feel to, to tell Dre, I have to borrow a car to come see you? You know, it. I don't think it felt anything, but it because we were so tight, mm -hmm. you know, like a brother. So it ain't like I might have felt embarrassed. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I felt a little yeah. embarrassed, you know, just hey, because it, it, it wasn't drugs, it wasn't girls, it wasn't liquor, you know, none of that did it. It was just me buying, and and it, he just responded without like a friend should. Oh, here, go go get a car, no problem. Just that simple. It wasn't no. Man, when are you gonna get your stuff together? No, it wasn't none of that. It was like a real friend supposed to be. Just he just did it. I mean, when he told you that, he said, "I'm just gonna give you a check to go buy a car." Wow. Especially because you were living in L.A. at the time, right? Yeah. Having no car in L.A. is yeah pretty bad. Yeah, pretty bad. <laughs> you know, it was only like yeah, a couple cities, of months I didn't have a car, and that yeah, but still I, yeah, because oh, you, yeah. you have kids, like yeah. yeah I mean, you're you're. And then I got to ask her to borrow her car to go. I'm like, I'm like, this ain't me, but it was. When he told you, I'm going, I'm, whatever it takes, I'm going to fix you. Here, Here's a check for a new car. How'd you feel? It just, you know, I wouldn't say relieved. I would just felt, well, that's, that's what friends are for. They ain't supposed to question, why did you get here? Or, you know, chastise you. What did you do that? No. A friend is in need, you know. I didn't come, I didn't, I didn't ask him for anything. I just said, I ain't got a car. Is that, you know, I didn't come, oh man, can you please help me? No, no. That's how a friend's supposed to be. They shouldn't even have to ask. If they see something wrong, oh, you, need, you need help, you know, whatever the question is. That's what a true friend should do, supposed to do.